News still following breaking news in Lehigh Acres. We were the first on scene after a car drove into a store on Lee Boulevard and our Holly Hojack is now standing by live on scene with new details. Peter, this is something out of an action movie. I'm standing here and it's hard to believe even seeing it myself. Take a look. There is a car inside this food mart. This is a residential street off Sunshine Boulevard near Lee Road. We know one man is dead after a shooting. The sheriff's office saying this is an isolated incident tonight, but not saying much else. As you can see behind me, those flashing lights, there's deputies and detectives on the scene. Police did just confirm that this is an active homicide investigation. Police telling us it's not your typical investigation, but wouldn't elaborate much further. That body was removed from the scene within the last 30 minutes. And as you can see, the crime scene has started to break down behind me. There are still a couple police officers left on scene. This was on a dead end street. The sheriff's office says the most shocking part about all of this is how elaborate this operation really was. Three houses, thousands of packages of synthetic marijuana being shipped from this house in San Carlos Park. It's called skimming. What these criminals are doing is mounting a device that looks very similar to this card acceptor. I want you to take a look at my hands. I have a dime and a pen. I spoke with security experts tonight who say nowadays cameras are so small they could fit into both of these items. Lee County says spraying them doesn't work because they breed during the day and they spray at night. Another problem with these mosquitoes, they can breed in almost any amount of water in something like a bird bath to something as small as a water bottle cap. So I'm just hanging out with my new pet snake here. We're at the Conservancy in Naples. You've got to eat them to beat them. That's what one local fisherman told me today. We're live in the kitchen here at Timber's Restaurant on Sanibel Island. Chef Tay Peng graciously allowing us back here tonight. Peng actually won the competition for the lionfish last month. He says he doesn't have any on the menu, but he'd be willing to serve it up if he could find a supplier. But the good news, it hasn't started raining here in Bonita Springs just yet, but the threat of some severe weather is causing some major hiccups at a lot of big events around the area. Here at the boat show, people still showing up with their umbrellas in hand, preparing for the worst. And joining us now is John Good, the manager of the boat show here, kind of to let us know what the procedure is if it does start to rain on us. What's the plan? Holly Hojek, I know you've been out there all day, Holly, following this. You spoke exclusively with two people who had a hand in this amazing recovery. We're currently in the staging area right now where less than two hours ago, a massive task force teamed up right here and set up out into those woods to search for that missing boy. Just a few minutes into that search, they found him in the woods just around the corner from here. I spoke to the rescue team and that rescue officer just moments after finding that little boy. Take a listen to the surreal moment they describe when they found him. When we came up on him, he was sleeping. It looked peaceful. It almost looked like he was deceased. It was kind of scary at first until I shook him and, and he was perked up to life and things went good from there. We were there just moments after the boy was rescued. The officer said they found him only using their flashlights. They were in the woods maybe five minutes when they spotted him. He was dirty and kept asking for something to drink. Several neighbors watched as the missing child search came to an end. Like I said, we were just all, all very just so happy that he was okay and everyone, you know, was crying and it was just, it was, it was a very intense moment. The USAR task force are the ones that found the little boy. USAR is made up of local fire department personnel. Estero Fire called them in earlier this afternoon to help in the search when it got dark. Once again, all of these people, all of this community breathing a huge sigh of relief tonight after what was a very long day searching for this little boy. Reporting live in Estero, Holly Hojek, NBC2. Hojek was with investigators as they arrested Braden and her former business partner, Holly. Charlotte Braden is accused of stealing from dozens of innocent people during some of life's most vulnerable moments. Today, many of her victims say she got what she deserved. Charlotte, why did you steal from these dead people? Haven't these families gone through enough? Charlotte Braden kept her head down and her mouth shut as she was handcuffed and put in the back of a squad car. Charlotte, what do you want to say to the victim? This moment, months in the making. It's the beginning of the end for her and the victims. I mean, 
I feel so bad for them, and I don't feel sorry for her. Brayden is accused of using her company, Sterling Estate Sales, to steal from at least a dozen people in some of life's most fragile moments. She'd say, we can take this. I said, we can't. It doesn't belong to us. I have to see if I can find any of my things. Ron Timmerman and his wife were at one of Brayden's warehouses today. You know, I can't believe, of course, I you know, had no idea that, you know, how, how long she was doing this. Searching for any family heirlooms they could find. Trying to save some of this stuff. But we can't just have to leave it, let it go. This large warehouse is just one of the locations where investigators say Braden stole the belongings of the deceased and stored them here to sell as her own. Seeing her arrested here today brought a little bit of closure to some of the victims. It's the emotional side of it that is really the important thing. Investigators with the Lee County Sheriff's Office have been building this case against Braden for months. Her former business partner, Jim McPartland, was arrested today, too. I think right now is uh, justice is served. Former co-workers say Braden took advantage of innocent people Charlotte, all while living in the lap of luxury. Now, nice cars, expensive jewelry, Charlotte, and a penthouse suite. There's just no guilt, no remorse, no no accountability. She took away their treasures. She took away all of their memories. She took their money with no qualms on from one victim to the next. Tonight, the only silver Braden has on her wrist is a pair of handcuffs. Both Braden and her former business partner, Jim McFarland, face charges of scheme to defraud and grand theft. If convicted, they could face up to 30 years in prison. The two teens are here on vacation. They were walking along Fort Myers Beach like we are right now when they saw something flailing in the water. They thought it was a shark. When they got closer, it was clear it was two dolphins in distress. Painful to watch. We just heard them squealing together, you know, I mean, trying to get back in the water, trying to float, trying to still like stay alive even harder to listen to. For about an hour, it wouldn't stop uh, squealing and doing that high, really high-pitched noise. Eric Mullen and Bailey Mullins were alone on the beach at 2.30 this morning when they spotted the dolphins stranded in shallow water. We came up to them, we thought eventually there were sharks at first, but then we came up to them closer and they turned out to be two dolphins. With their own bare hands, the two boys tried to push the stranded dolphins back out into open water. It was so tired that it, it was just full body weight and you just couldn't push it back in. As long as I just kept like petting him and I was just nice and gentle with him, he was, didn't try to get away or anything, it was really nice. The younger male dolphin died before FWC could get there. For the next four hours, through heavy downpours and strong winds, the teens stayed by the female dolphin's side. Well, it's a dolphin. I mean, this, you don't just let a dolphin die. FWC removed both dolphins. The female died on the way to the hospital. Tonight, FWC said these teenagers did everything right. We saw them and we just tried to help them out. You know, I mean, we felt bad. It's like a little puppy dog, like about like dying in our hands. Tonight, FWC is trying to figure out why these dolphins were stranded here along the shore. An interesting fact we uncovered tonight, FWC says if you do see a stranded dolphin, do not try and push it back out into the water. FWC says it's stranded for a reason and needs help. Reporting live on Fort Myers Beach, Holly Hojek, NBC2. <laughs> Honoring a fallen hero. Thousands of people stood beside Sergeant Michael Wilson's wife and his children today to say goodbye. He would never think twice about jumping a call for somebody else. That was his nature. That's what Mike did. That's what he did Monday night. He took the call. It would be Sergeant Wilson's last. After 21 years on the job with the Charlotte County Sheriff's Office, Wilson was killed in the line of duty responding to a domestic disturbance. A husband and father of three making the ultimate sacrifice for a complete stranger. I can't imagine what they're going through. And I'm just thankful that they're out there helping and supporting. It's really tough. You never know when they're going to come home if they do. Wilson's law enforcement family spoke at length about his dedication to the job and his unique personality. 
The two-hour ceremony giving us a rare glimpse into the life of a man who touched so many. Although I took pride in his service, ultimately it was his family he was proudest of. Described as a practical joker with a smile you could see from a mile away, friends say Sergeant Wilson was truly one of a kind. The loss written on the faces of all who came to say goodbye. Today's service, a tribute to a hero. Mike had time to call for backup. I know he had time to call on God that he believed in. One man's legacy left to be carried out by his family and his community. For all you please call. For last call and tribute to and in memory of our fallen fellow With a final call over the radio. All units. Is out of Sergeant Michael Wilson was called home. Ready. In Punta Gorda, Holly Hojek, NBC2. Thank you for watching NBC2 News Now, your 24 hour news and weather station in Southwest Florida. I'm Holly Hojek. Here are the top stories in the news at this hour. Deputies are investigating a couple that's been going door to door trying to sell security signs. A trip to the grocery store turns violent. Lee County deputies say this woman walked up to a man in his truck in the public's parking lot and slapped him across the face. A Collier County woman finished what she started decades ago. Melissa Jimenez received her GED at a ceremony in Collier County. And as you're about to see, the timing made for a very special moment. 17 people are facing charges for dealing drugs on and around Fort Myers Beach. The Lee County Sheriff's Office says it's part of a sting they're calling Operation March Madness. Investigators say now is a busy time for drug dealers with spring breakers in town. In all, they seize more than a kilo of cocaine and more than two pounds of marijuana. And remember, for breaking news, weather, information, and news online, you can log on 24 hours a day to NBC-2.com. Thanks for watching.